So I want to do a quick exercise with you before we start this conversation. I want you to raise your hand if you're currently already on or are wanting to start your minimalist journey. You know, a journey towards living a more intentional life with less. Okay, good. Now, I also want you to raise your hand if you're currently already on or are wanting to start your mindfulness journey. You know, improving the overall quality of your awareness and consciousness. Okay, great. Now, what if I told you that both minimalism and mindfulness are the same in many ways and that they both complement and support each other? See, to me, and you may have heard me express this before, but I believe that when you embrace minimalism, you embrace yourself, your true self. And what's interesting about this is that you may be running from yourself or avoiding your true self, and you don't even realize it, but we'll save that for a separate conversation. See, when you do this, embrace minimalism, it welcomes many other positive benefits into your life. So when you make the commitment to owning less, to simplifying your space and time, it then allows you to create the space and time you need to be mindful, to then embrace yourself. And that then leads to you being more intentional about the present, which leads me to my first point for why minimalism and mindfulness have such a unique relationship, because collectively they force you to focus on the present. Now, what does this mean? See, many of the items that we're still holding on to, both physically and emotionally, are things that tend to carry the title or role of something other than what's important or essential to us right now. So for example, you probably have a handful of items that are your just in case, if I ever, one day I might items. But if you're being honest, those just in case, if I ever, one day I might moments haven't come yet and they likely aren't going to. Or maybe, maybe you're holding on to something emotional, like an item from a past relationship or a negative memory from the past relationship. And neither of those things are doing anything good for you in this present moment. So if you take a step back and if you think about it, or if you start to be mindful of it, you would then wonder, well, why am I holding on to these items? And then you start to tell yourself, well, there isn't a real reason for me to hold on to them. The second thing this relationship does is it allows you to be present. Now, this is different than focusing on a present, which is what we just talked about. See, being present is about control. Rather than letting stuff and things control and dictate your life, minimalism and mindfulness puts that control back into your hands. So instead of spending your life and your time and your energy managing stuff and things, you can spend your time and your energy being present in life and enjoying the values you have. And I actually have a new series here on the channel titled Beyond Stuff, where we have tons of conversations all about this and so much more. So definitely hit that subscribe button down below and join this community if you haven't done so already. And make sure you hit that bell so you're notified every time I drop a new video. So the last thing that minimalism and mindfulness does is together they encourage process. See, all of this is about the journey or the process, the growth that you're experiencing in your life. It's not about the end result and it's not about achieving the minimalist aesthetic, whatever that means, but it's truly about a lifestyle shift or making a mindset shift or a reinventing of yourself. And when you fully embrace minimalism and mindfulness, those shifts start to occur over and over and over again in your life. Trust me. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that this message spoke to you and resonated with you. Make sure you hit a thumbs up for me if it did. And always remember to stay true to you. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.